a universal shift register uh, which is also referred to as a bi-directional shift register okay. the whole point uh, of today's lecture is also to see you know how in some of the labs that we've done is how we can put together everything and uh, make computers okay uh, when we talk about computer we you generally think of like desktop computers or uh, laptops but uh, please know that our calculator is also a computer okay um, any game that you have any gadget that you have is also a computer because it's doing it has a finite number of states and it's doing certain things and have certain functions so we did encoder decoder muxes registers counters and sequencer you can put all those things together or individually and come up with some application and in this example you're actually going to use muxes and flip-flops and we'll see how we can make shift register as the name suggests shift would mean going something left to the right or up and down or something like that so we are going to come up with a uh, universal shift register which basically has four mode controls okay uh, and we know because we are using muxes for four mode control we need two selector switches s1 and s0 because that is when we will have four different combinations so no change would mean whatever the inputs is taken up by the register it displays the same thing at the output all right so say if the four bit sequence is triple zero one at the output you also get triple zero one there's no change to it for zero one every time the clock arrives it will shift to the right okay shift to the right the second the third uh, mode control is shift left every time the clock drives it actually shift to the left okay by one and then the fourth option is the parallel load and we discuss the registers and classification and formats we understand parallel load is something whenever the clock arrives all the data is taken at one time okay so it's say if the uh, inputs are set to double one double zero first clock comes in all of the data goes up and it's it can be uh, it will be reflected at the output uh, so also notice this register operation is actually taking serial input also because shift right and shift left is serially input and then parallel load is parallel input like taking all four bits so it's actually a uh, both two or more flip-flops ties to some clocks such that they update together register is a state we know it's like a memory in a box uh, at the bottom uh, right you see uh, three flip-flops which are attached together you have the clear and load load we all know that we, if you want to hold the data for a certain amount of time we keep that load in there for that reason uh, and we do understand what serial and parallel means now serial would mean uh, it takes one bit at a time every time the clock arrives whereas the parallel it takes all of the data at one time uh, we also understand data can be entered in two ways serial serially and parallel there are four different types serial in serial out and parallel in parallel out and two more that we discussed in the earlier lecture uh, let's go ahead and work on this uh, a universal shift register we have the block diagram here all what we need to do here is actually we need to wire it up such that it actually uh, does those uh, four operations and I'll just write it down over here again we have our 4x1 marks right here at the bottom and these will have two selector switches Okay, and those will be S1 and S0. Um, and here is the inputs right here. One, two, three, four inputs. Okay. Uh, we have... Um, this is going to be a D flip flop. So, say this is your D four. Uh, this is your D three. 
input this is your d2 this is your d1 say this is a positive edge triggered so you have this clock right here okay um, these are the outputs of the marks so we just label them as um, y4 Um, and then we have these outputs or the flip-flops say this will be say Q4 um, Q3 or, uh, And then say these are the outputs right here you got a4 And a1 So the first mode control is 0, 0, no change. Uh, A4, A3, A2, A1 are your outputs. How should I wire them up that whatever we have at A4, A3, A2, and A1 would not change? If I make a connection, What would this mean? Now this is uh, there's no, not really rocket science right here. So say if my S1 and S0 is selector switches are set to 0, 0 and this is when I don't want any change so say if this is 1 initially this is 1 a2 is 1 a1 is 1 uh, when selector switches are 0 0 I want this data to remain same no change okay and therefore I have wired a4 to 0 and because this is 1 so that means I'm getting 1 here correct because it's selected selectors which are set to 0 0 whatever we have at line 0 will go past the marks so I get 0 here whenever the clock arrives the property of a D flip flop is whenever the clock arrives, uh, the next state will be equal to the whatever D is. Because D is uh, 1 here, D is 1 here, so the output will be 1. Q4 will be 1, correct? So there's no change. And similarly, I have to do this for the other three flip flops as well, okay? Okay, all right, folks. Now, everybody understands the first mode control of the shift register. Basically, no change the way we have wired up. Now, we're going to have to do wiring for the second mode control when S1 and S0 are 0, 1. So, S1 is 0, S0 is 0, which means A4 is need to switch to A3. A3 need to switch to A2 and A2 need to switch to A1 and at the A4 we will have a new output correct okay so this is going to be okay you can also think of it in a way that I was explaining you that we have a data x coming in here which is a sequence of zeros and ones this x could be connected to this right here this right here okay now what happens what goes here in line one of this second box right here 
A4, okay? So uh, what I can do here, I can connect this to Uh, moving on to the third mode control which is shift left meaning a1 becomes a2 a2 becomes a3 a3 becomes a4 and then you will have a new output at the a1 okay so that will be the new signal input over here Just like you did it for shift right here what you would do connect the a1 with Therefore, there's going to be a shift to the left. Okay. Um, moving on to the last mode control, which is going to be the parallel load. Just parallel load, four input lines. Okay. So, say this is your I4, this is your I3, um, this is your I2, uh, and this is your I1. Okay, so you have four input lines connected to each of the mocks uh, and that would take whatever you have. Uh, so what this means, say at the I4, you got 0, 0, 0, 0 at I4, I3, I2 and I1. If the selector switches are set to 1 and 1, what would be Y4, Y3, Y2 and Y1, the output of the mocks? Because I4 is 0 and selector switch is set to 1, 1, so Y4 will be 0. And here again, selector switches are set to 1, 1, so Y3 will be equals to I3, which is 0. So you got all Y2 and Y1 zeros. So at the D4 and D3, you got 0, 0, 0. When the clock comes in, the output will be 0, 0, 0, 0. Correct? Uh, this is the property of the D flip flop. We know that when clock is high, the next state is equals to D. Um, so notice here, folks, uh, uh, the reason it's called universal shift register is because it has four mode controls.